And then the, the, the third of Kepler's laws um, was that if you looked at the radius of an orbit, say, let's say maybe this is Earth, right? The distance, the, the distance Earth is from the center of the sun, right? If this is Earth, right? And then maybe this is Mars, right? And you take the Earth radius and raise it to the third power, divide by the time it takes the Earth to go around the sun, that's the period of motion, right? If you take that and you cube the radius, square the, the period, that's the same for every planet. Anything that orbits the sun is going to have the same ratio of r to the third over t squared. Okay, so, so literally, you know, the radius of, of uh, Mercury to the third over the period of Mercury squared equals the radius of Venus to the third over the period of Venus squared equals the radius of Earth to the third over the period of Earth squared equals the radius of Mars to the third over etc etc right all of these things they're all the same everything right now how did he do that I have no idea he was a talented mathematician he didn't have access to Excel though um, so you know I wouldn't be able to do it but, but he definitely figured this out and he figured it out empirically okay now let me just say that we can derive this from Newtonian stuff. Let me just show you this. So if, if we've got an <coughs> object, say, orbiting the sun, right, our, we've got the force of gravity. So G, M, mass of the sun, mass of the planet over R squared is equal to the mass of the planet. We're going to assume the sun doesn't move, uh, times 4 pi squared uh, radius uh, divided by T squared, right? We can cancel the mass of the planet, and then if we move the 4 pi squared down here and the r squared up there, we get g mass of the sun over 4 pi squared is equal to r to the third over t squared. Now, if you take a look, that's, of course, the r to the third over t squared that, that Kepler came up with before Newton, right? Okay, that's that. And then notice everything on this side is a constant. Okay, so g is a constant, 4 and pi squared is a constant. And then all of the planets, of course, are orbiting the sun, and the mass of the sun would be the same for all of them, right? So this is why it worked. This is definitely not how Kepler um, came up with it, right? Uh, he came up with this before Newton, and certainly when Newton came up with his law of gravity, it had to agree with this, right? So it was one way that perhaps Newton could check his work, but I don't think he used this, actually.